Hello there and praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank you very much for finding time to be here uh, to continue in our, topic, our topical study in our Word Feast program. And my name is Kelvin Wesonga. Yeah, I want you to stay tuned. In the house, as usual, as usual I usually have my friend here. I think um, she can introduce herself. Okay. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Joan Wachia, and I am happy to be here once again to tackle another topic. Yeah, sure, sure. So um, this program is very rich and very endowed with uh, a lot of knowledge about the Word of God because we want to tackle every topic in light with the Word of God and so that we get a proper understanding. Now, today is another wonderful time that we're going to tackle the subject of temptations. We know that we are living uh, in this world, a fallen world, after our first parents sinned, then this world automatically became fallen. And so everything that happens out of the fallen world is uh, married with a, a lot of uh, temptations and hard life and difficulties. Yeah, but today we want to be able to understand what is temptations and what is temptation exactly. So I want to welcome Joan to share with us a little bit, maybe literally or maybe in layman's language, mm -hmm. what do you understand by temptation? Okay, mm. what I understand by uh, temptation, mm. it's a very strong desire that people get, human beings get, mm -hmm. uh, to gratify the desires of the flesh, what mm. they want, what they really want. It, mm. And it usually has a no negative connotation. Mm. It's something that is not good for them or is termed as... Um, evil i would mm. say yeah mm. yeah that's true there there must be something that en is enticing mm -hmm. maybe something which is beautiful something just colorful something which you think if i take it if i do it if i engage in it mm -hmm. i'll get some kind of satisfaction yeah so and uh, most times just like you said it has a negative connotation yeah it is something which is probably wrong mm -hmm. something which is probably evil yeah. yeah so that is temptation and i would add that it usually appeals to the five senses that mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. sight the hearing the touch mm -hmm. yeah exactly the five yeah yeah now that is the literal meaning of temptation and i want us to get the meaning of the the word temptation now in the light of the word of god we get the biblical context of what is the meaning of temptation and probably maybe the book that you're going to read in the bible will probably give us a uh, open our eyes and our minds to know exactly what's the meaning of temptation Jonah said uh, about about um our five senses that's the, those are the should i call them the entries of temptations yeah. um the parts of our, our our being which lead us into temptation and that is very true and i think in this book of uh, first john mm -hmm. chapter 2 verse 16 it also has the same same is a similar a similar explanation yeah yeah maybe you can read for us okay first john chapter 2 verse 16 and it says do not i'm um, sorry for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world exactly mm. the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh. Human beings, we are prone to satisfying our flesh, mm. what our flesh needs and um, what we think can make us feel good. So sometimes the flesh will drive us to satisfy its desires. Mm. And um, the lust of the eyes, beauty comes in. and uh, When something's beautiful, you will like it. And you'd want to, to engage with it. You'd want to take it up. So that's where the last of eyes comes in. And uh, the pride of life. Pride of life is whereby you want to gain a lot of knowledge so that you are famous. You want people to know about you. And then somehow pride comes in. Mm -hmm. The pride of life. You know, I have this kind of knowledge. I've gone to this. I've done this and this. And so the pride of life comes in. And you see these three uh, ways in which the book of John has mentioned, most likely is what happened in the Garden of Eden. When uh, 
when uh, the ancient serpent came to Eve and found him and uh, found her and um, tempted her yeah. and told her, did God exactly tell you that you will die when you eat of that, the fruit <laughs> from that tree? So um, the devil wanted Eve to doubt God. And I think somehow, somehow, the devil succeeded in doing that. And um, she, he, he told her that when you eat that fruit, you'll get knowledge. So, so Eve looked at the fruit, and it was desirable to her, to her eyes. And so that, that, that's where the last of the eyes came in. Yeah. It was desirable to be taken. You will get knowledge, pride of life. Eve wanted knowledge. Mm-hmm wanted knowledge and then uh last of the flesh wanted to, she wanted to eat the fruit to satisfy the desire of the flesh because that is food mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. what do you think yeah i i, mm. I, I would i agree with exactly mm. what you said mm. and uh the dev, the devil is a very big part of mm. the temptations that that come to us he's mm. always trying to convince us that this is good for you although you know you know in your heart that it's not mm. good but mm. he'll try to give you reasons of why you need to do that thing mm. and um also because our it's a, it's in our innate nature to be evil mm. since adam sinned it was every all his offspring which also includes us mm. uh, were born with that innate desire to sin so we are fighting two forces. We are fighting our own flesh and we are fighting the devil who's trying to convince us to mm-hmm. do evil and to displease God. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Now, um, most times, what tempts us is something that will give us a partial satisfaction, mm. partial enjoyment. So it is usually, it, it is, it's usually partial. Mm-hmm whereby um, you don't get a long-term satisfaction. Yeah. Something's come up, you're tempted because you want that short-term satisfaction. Mm. And most times, people, um, they get themselves giving into that temptation, not looking beyond that temptation. And they, I think that's a mistake that we usually do. Mm-hmm. Uh, something enticing will come our way and then we will want to um, engage with it without thinking twice mm-hmm. about the future or even the long-term effect of this. Yeah. And uh, that is a good example in the Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. Probably Eve thought that when I get the knowledge, I'm good to go. Yeah. She forgot the repercussions of that. Mm-hmm. And now uh, the whole universe, the whole earth, now suffers that punishment out of that yeah. short-term satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And at that moment when you're tempted, you, you, you get a very short-term um, uh, mindset. Mm-hmm. You only see what you're going to get out of that action. You don't see the, the repercussions that will come out of it. And even if you think about the repercussions, you feel like the reward that you'll get at this moment is, is worth it. And uh, that's what drives us to, 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 to sin and to give in to temptations. Mm. Yes. True. Mm. We, can, we can find still another confirmation of that uh, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 uh, which says you are dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived following the course of the world following the ruler of the power of the air the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient and all of us once lived among them in the passions of the flesh, following the desires of the flesh and senses. So you see, most, most temptations that come through, those are the uh, major manifestations of uh, temptations in mm-hmm. a man's life. Yeah. The flesh, the eyes, and the pride of life. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and um, something else that we can talk about temptations. I was discussing with you about mm-hmm. could there be a positive temptation mm-hmm. and a negative temptation? Yeah. Maybe maybe your viewers asking, uh, could there be a positive temptation? Could there be a negative temptation? And what if a temptation is positive? Should you go ahead and 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 and, and uh, give in to that temptation? Okay. Um, 
temptation as i said from the beginning it has mm. a, a negative connotation so if if it if it's a good thing i don't think would really call it temptation mm-hmm. maybe you'd say maybe it's a I, i don't know the exact word to use but temptation usually is a draw to do something that is not right mm. yeah so it's always has a negative connotation mm-hmm. for example we have this uh, wonderful plan you've prepared you've come up with and uh, you've set goals you have a vision you want to achieve something and uh, you've given it a, it a timeline and it's something that should be progressive step by step so that probably monitor the growth and what is happening and the challenges and everything and and all of a sudden uh, someone comes in with another idea that probably will 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 make you achieve that vision like tomorrow and um there's something that you want you want to build up something you mm-hmm. want to learn something mm-hmm. so that temptation might come and you look at it and say wow this is uh, i think this is good it's really appealing mm-hmm. to me it's really appealing to my eyes yeah. i think if i do this I'd, i would have finished whatever i wanted to do mm-hmm. but you will not have achieved your long term goals yeah you not have achieved your vision properly the way you wanted mm-hmm. so that one automatically becomes a temptation in as much as it's a good thing mm-hmm. but since it will derail or rather blind you of what is ahead yeah. then it becomes negative and you might also get that goal but then the reason why your vision takes a long time to to be achieved is because along the process you're building character you're able to so that, so that by the time you get to that success you'll be able to sustain it mm-hmm. because a lot of the times when you get instant success then a lot of people are not able to sustain it they'll get very rich or very successful and mm-hmm. then the next day they are they've gone back even worse than mm-hmm. what they began mm-hmm. so as much as it might seem like a good thing it's not leading you to the right uh, the right path you'll not be able you not build the character that you need to sustain mm. that goal mm. yes <laughs> now um maybe you can uh, start asking ourselves uh, why are there temptations why are there temptations why should we be tempted and why are we tempted in the first place mm. what do you think john i guess i'll just repeat what i said um the flesh is the flesh. It's, it's, a, it's it's an innate thing that the flesh wants to be gratified why does the flesh wants to be why, gratified oh, why does the flesh <laughs> want to be gratified uh, because uh the flesh is is it 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 moves towards feeling good and mm-hmm. uh when you gratify the flesh then it it feels good at that time mm. and um the fall of 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 man mm. it puts that desire in us and mm. also the devil is also always on the prowl to get us and to make us gratify the desires of the flesh and also and move to his side because when we do then we are on his side mm. yeah that's true mm. you remember um and the devil has a vision satan himself has a vision of drawing more people to his side yeah and um the bible says that he is moving around roaring like a lion to mm. devour yeah people and even the chosen ones believers and so he's very passionate about what he's doing mm-hmm. and since that's what is happening and uh our life our lives as, as christians as believers is, is is usually um opposite or um the enemy doesn't love it and so he'll find ways of uh, obstructing us from our purposes obstructing us from from our vision mm-hmm. and obviously he will bring in all these things yeah. temptations all of them he tried jesus christ the the temptation of jesus christ yeah he asked him the first temptation if you're the son of god turn these stones into bread and so bread is food that's where the flesh com- comes yeah. in mm-hmm. satisfaction of the desires of the flesh mm-hmm. and since this was not the right time at least if, if Christ could have given in then most likely we wouldn't have been here today yeah. <laughs> so so Christ was able to conquer that 
uh, desire of food. Yes, he was angry, but he knew his purpose and he knew his vision. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't allow uh, the enemy to derail him from that purpose and vision. Something else, um, he asked Jesus Christ to throw himself out of a high place. You see, that, that was tempting God himself, the power of God, doing it deliberately without using wisdom. And if Christ could have given in, most likely it could, it could, it could have been another story. Yeah. So Christ was able to, 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 to defeat or to defeat the enemy, to defeat those temptations and to emerge a winner for one reason, because he had the word of God. Yeah. Mm. And so I think that one will take us into probably before before you talk about uh, ways of dealing with temptations. Mm -hmm. We can now talk, uh, I think we've mentioned the various ways of uh, in which temptations come in. The flesh, the eyes, uh, knowledge, pride, uh, pride of life. Those are the three major uh, manifestations of, of temptations. Mm -hmm. And now, <clears throat> having known that, then how do we deal with temptations? How do we deal with temptations in our daily lives? And especially as, as believers and as Christians, how mm. do we deal with temptations? Yeah. Mm. Um, first of all, mm. I would say we have to be aware that we are being faced by temptations and mm. temptations are very much a part of a believer's life. Mm. Not just a believer, everybody's life, uh, even unbelievers. So when you understand that you are very prone to giving in to temptations, mm. then that's the very first step of, of dealing with temptations. Mm. Because when you're aware of an enemy, then you are able to defend yourself. Mm. I would say maybe in a, in a battlefield, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, an en enemies are facing each other and they can see each other, then they're able to defend themselves. So when you see, you, you know you are vulnerable, then you are able to defend yourself from, mm. from, tem from temptations. Mm. And I would say, I would uh, refer this to First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8, where it says, Be sober, vi be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour, which is what you said before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, the Bible is advising us to be sober and to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. you, you, to be vigilant is to be aware and to be, have all your senses, like your antennas up, and be aware that the enemy is after you. So you have to find a way to defend yourself. So yeah. Exactly. Mm. And um, being aware, being aware of, 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 of uh, loopholes of temptations. I would also add about uh, dipping ourselves in the word of God. Yeah. You see, uh, the devil, he knows the word of God because this guy was there probably before us. And he knows all the schemes, yeah. all the schemes how to get man. And uh, most likely because Christ came to destroy the works of the enemy. And every believer who is in Christ will be able to, to, to defeat the enemy. Yeah. But anyone who is just there alone, they won't be able because the, the devil is very sharp and very knowledgeable and he has all those knowledge. Mm. And um, he knows the word of God very well, most mm. likely even more than <laughs> some of the believers. And if you're, if, if you're not careful, if you don't dip ourselves properly into the word of God and study the word of God with mm. understanding, mm -hmm. then temptations will come away. Yeah. And uh, we'll give in without knowing. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, let you realize this was, a, this was a, a temptation because he most times won't bring the temptation yeah. to appear as though it is negative, to appear as though it is dangerous, but it will be covered, it will be covered so that you are blinded, so that you will see it, it is very enticing. Mm -hmm. But someone who was the word of God, and because the word of God will serve as the um, light to them, the lamp to them, They'll be able to see through and see beyond that one. And um, that's why Christ was able to defeat the enemy through the word of God. Yeah. 
and you see he knew the word of God. Mm-hmm. There's some he quoted in the book of Psalms about a certain temptation, about mm-hmm. throwing himself. And he told Jesus, because the word of God, it is written that the angels will hold you, that not part of your foot will be, will crash on the stones. Mm-hmm. As well, you'll find that in the book of Psalms. Yeah. He used the word because he knew the word. So, but Christ knew the word more than him. He understood the context of the word. And so that means every believer should be reading the word with understanding. To under, you understand the context, the meaning of that word. Mm-hmm. So that if the enemy brings a temptation just through the word, you'll be able to understand the context and you'll know that this is a temptation. Yeah. And this is not, um, it's not right, probably interpreted correctly. It's not interpreted correctly. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so if we dip ourselves in the word of God, we seek to know the word of God. We seek to understand the word of God. Uh, temptations will come away because that is obvious. We are living on this earth, on this world. They are there. Actually, when you look into the Lord's Prayer, the same way it says that and lead us not into temptation. Why? Because temptations are there. Even Christ knew. That's why he taught that Lord's Prayer. Yeah. He knew temptations are there. So when we wake, when we wake up each and every day, we wake up preparing ourselves to face temptations on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So, but we'll not be able to face these temptations and defeat them if we do not have the word of God yeah. or a proper understanding of the word of God. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm. And from what you've said, that uh, <laughs> from the Lord's Prayer, mm. it says that uh, lead us not into temptation. Mm. And you remember that when Jesus was teaching the, 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 the Lord's Prayer, his disciples had asked him, how to pray. And so if Jesus saw the need to ask God to lead them away from temptation, then that's a way, then uh, another way of, of, uh, of dealing with temptations is by praying. He understood the power of prayer in resisting temptations. And we can also see that in uh, Matthew chapter 26, mm-hmm. verse 40 to 41, where it says, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Mm. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So here he's explaining to his disciples that um, his his hour of death was drawing very near. And uh, it would be a time of trials for both him and for his disciples. Because now when your leader is is crucified on the cross, Mm. then that is a very... But uh, like... um, they even went into hiding after after Jesus was crucified. Mm. So Jesus was telling them, pray that you may not enter into temptations. Mm. And uh, he also goes on to explain that the, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm. Your spirit may want you to do the right thing, but your flesh may overpower your spirit. Mm. And the way of, of, of overpowering the flesh and making the, the, the spirit triumph over the flesh is by praying. Because prayer is very powerful mm. and it, it, it strengthens you against temptations. Mm. And I would even go as far as saying that fasting, fasting is also very important. Because when somebody fasts, they, they, it's like you minimize the desires of the flesh because you stop eating or you stop uh, doing something that um, usually brings you joy. So you, you, you let go of it for that time where you give yourself into prayer because when uh, it's like a way of silencing the flesh. Mm. Now the desires of the flesh, the first days might be difficult of, 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 of fasting. Your flesh is demanding it wants food. But then after that, it, it, it's like it forgets that it needs food. Mm. And then now the spirit gets stronger at that point. You're able to even listen to the spirit talking. And... Uh, so prayer and fasting is very important in dealing with temptations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've remembered something. Mm-hmm. Um, that of God says that um, gratify not the desires of the flesh and that we walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. Mm-hmm. I think that could be a very good solution, walking by the spirit, because the spirit will always want the will of God to happen and to be established because the spirit knows the mind of God. Mm. And so if, if we believers uh, uh, deliberately want or decide 
that want to be led by the Spirit, then the Spirit will lead us. And if we give the Spirit that allowance, then obviously it will overpower the flesh. But most times what we do is that uh, we allow the flesh to overpower the Spirit. Yeah. And when the flesh overpowers the Spirit, then the Spirit will not be able to to help us mm -hmm. because we've allowed. It will take someone who has that desire to walk in the Spirit to be able to uh, to, to, to dismiss this, the, the, desires, the evil desires of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Because um, when we walk in the Spirit, the Spirit will give us wisdom. The Spirit will uh, give us the grace to be able to overpower the desires of the flesh. And walking in the Spirit, basically you ask God, because you can't just wake up in the morning and, and, and you tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to walk in, by the Spirit mm -hmm. and in the Spirit. And walking in the Spirit, basically it means what we've said. We be prayerful. We pray. You're walking in the Spirit. We study the Word of God. The Spirit speaks to us through the Word of God. And so we start our day walking in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, most times when these temptations come, we could be able to dismiss them just by mentioning the word of God. Yeah. You have that word of God in your mind and this temptation has come your way. And you tell yourself, um, walk by the spirit, not by the flesh. Mm -hmm. The word of God says so. Do not gratify the desires of the flesh. I tell you, if you, if you keep on mentioning these words and affirming them to yourself, yeah. you'll find yourself defeating temptations mm -hmm. very easily yes. through the power of God. Exactly. Mm. And um, another way of dealing with temptations is fleeing from the temptations. Sometimes the temptation might be too, dif might be too powerful for you to overcome. Mm. So you have to run away from it. And we take the example of, of, of Joseph when he was tempted by the wife of Potiphar. Maybe if he would have stayed there, he would have given in to, mm. to, to Potiphar's wife. But he decided to run because he saw fire coming. So he had to run away. So sometimes uh, you have to get away from that temptation. Do everything that you can to get away from, the tempta from that temptation. You remember even Jesus said, if your eye is causing you to, to sin, then it would be better that you chop off that eye or to chop off that arm. You better go to heaven with one arm than to go to hell with all your arms, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be better. So if it's that phone or that app, maybe you, it's causing you to, to, to think of an inappropriate things and, 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 and lead you to do inappropriate things, then go as far as even deleting that app and even, even getting rid of that smartphone because it is your weakness. So fleeing from temptation is a very important part. So mm -hmm. you, you don't always have to be act macho and, and courageous that you can overcome this. Sometimes you need to run. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, there's this um, problem mm -hmm. that sometimes um, the so-called fiery Christians and mm -hmm. believers have that, uh, you know, I'm very strong. I speak in tongues. I preach the word of God. I go for missions. I go for uh, outreach, outreaches, and I'm good. I think I'm strong. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something the Bible says that uh, um, someone who thinks that they are they're already standing, yeah. they should think twice. Mm -hmm. So you'll find people of that nature will find themselves dancing. You see, dancing with a with a temptation. Um, entertaining temptation. If, 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 if Joseph could have just been there and entertaining it, telling her, no, I can't, no, I can't, that is entertaining. Eventually, he would have found himself there, yeah. a victim. So sometimes we find ourselves playing with fire. You, you see this is fire, but you play with it. Mm -hmm. You entertain, telling yourself, I'm strong. I can't fall a victim. Mm -hmm. But what happens, you will surely fall a victim yeah. as time goes by. Mm. So again, it will be good to, to be very aware. Yeah. Very aware of that. If I play with this, eventually I'll fall a victim. I'll be a victim mm. of this. Mm. So, yeah. 
something else about staying focused um, knowing your principles of life if if someone has principles that are leading them in life they won't easily fall into temptations yeah. because they know themselves they know what they want mm -hmm. they understand where they are going yeah so they are already on that path they want to achieve a certain vision mm -hmm. they have a future they have a destiny they want to get into yeah. and they have principles which are leading them and guiding them those kind of people it will be very rare to find them falling into temptations yeah. because they won't allow obstructions to come their way mm -hmm. so staying focused with what you're doing whether in the christian life whether in the corporate world you stay focused. Yeah. Mm. That's very true. Mm. And um, another way of dealing with temptation is having an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When you know you have a weakness for something, telling somebody that you have a weakness for that thing and telling them to be accountable for you, that will be a very good step in overcoming temptations. Mm. Because when you feel like this temptation is coming and it's about to over, overcome you. You can even call that person and tell them, I'm feeling this way. And they'll, encu they'll encourage you mm -hmm. and tell you and, 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 and uh, encourage you to be stronger and to overcome it. So having mm -hmm. an accountab accountability partner is very important, mm -hmm. especially when you know you can't do it all on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's true. That's where the fellowship of brethren comes in. Yeah, Whereby uh, we are very much encouraged to to, to gather together as brethren in a fellowship to encourage one another, to urge one another, mm -hmm. and to sharpen one another. Yeah. yeah. Um, the book of James chapter 1 verse 13 to 18. Sometimes uh, I think these, these are concern which uh, James was addressing to the people then. And uh, people were thinking, because God created us, he put us into this world mm. and all the, these things are happening. Then it is him who is tempting us. And uh, that could be in the mind of people. It's God who tempts. It's God who tempts. And uh, I think James was trying to address that properly and to give a correct uh, observation of that. Yeah. And uh, that's James chapter 1 verse 13 to 18. It says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Since temptation has a connotation of negativity, then it can never be of God. Yeah. It can never be of God. Mm -hmm. So God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. He doesn't tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. That's where the three major manifestations of temptations comes in. Mm -hmm. and then after the desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when it is full grown, it gives birth to death. Yeah. So don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose us to give us birth through the word, the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all, all he created. So basically, James is saying that nothing evil comes from God. Nothing evil. Temptation is negative, so it will never come from God. Mm -hmm. It is we who give in to, uh, to the desires of the world, the desires of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. So you will give in to that. Yeah. So God will never tempt anyone. Mm. And, and uh, the trials which Christians go through, God can try someone. Yeah. But he won't tempt someone. Trial most times may not lead someone to sin, but temptations mm. will lead them to sin. Yeah. Trial are like tests, which God can put someone through a test probably to strengthen their faith, to build their character, just to build them up. Those are trials and tests. Mm -hmm. That one you can say God can take someone through a trial. But temptations, 
they don't come from god yeah mm. exactly in fact in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 it says mm. that um god will not allow us to be tempted uh, beyond yeah. what yeah, we can exactly. yeah he will mm. provide a way out and mm. that we can escape mm. so god in fact mm. is for you when you're dealing with temptations he will not mm. he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can take even you take the story of job um he allowed satan to to torment job but then he knew that job could take that he could take whatever the, um, the devil was, was bringing towards mm. his way mm. so yeah god is for us when we are dealing with temptations and that is an encouragement mm. that we are not alone in this mm. and we can always seek his mm. his help mm. yes yeah now um as as we are talking something just crossed my mind mm. about temptation as it is a temptation and actually acting on the temptation mm-hmm. that is giving in to the temptation someone may ask if i'm tempted have i already sinned if i'm tempted now temptation is one thing and acting on that temptation is another thing when you act on the temptation meaning that when you're giving in to the temptation then you have sinned but we all have opportunities to overcome uh temptation the moment it presents itself and just like we said god is for for us when you're tempted he'll provide a way out yeah before we fall victims of that temptation yeah he'll provide a way out so temptations are there they are there they'll always be there for every <coughs> person whether born again not born again they are there yeah but handling that temptation is what matters mm-hmm. and for we believers we are encouraged to handle the temptation in the light of the word of god and to totally depend on god because we will not be able to overcome mm-hmm. temptations if we put god out of the picture we will never be able to overcome them yeah exactly and so i think we've come to the end of our what this program uh, this day and um I want to show you that God is with all of us. God is with all of us and he will be able to provide a way out in whatever temptations we might be in because temptations are always there and that's why in the Lord's prayer it say that lead us not into temptation that already tells you that temptations are there every day. So when we wake up in the morning every day we need to pray to God to help us to overcome the temptations that may present themselves in our daily lives. And I want to tell you and I want to show you if you totally depend on God, on God, if you totally um rely on him to help you. He will the Bible says that grace has appeared to all men, teaching them to say no to ungodliness, to say no to evil. So God will give you grace, he will give me grace, he will give all of us the grace to overcome temptations to overcome the evil desires of the world of the flesh and the last of the eyes so may god bless you very much uh in case of any question be free to comment down there on this channel and i believe that we'll be able to reach out to you so may god bless you very much till next time have a good time